the first thing here is, the first example of a situation is the earthquake scale, the Richter scale, and numbers you give for it to express how, what the magnitude of earthquakes is, of, of an earthquake. I'm sure you're familiar with on the news, you've heard uh, things, they say, oh, it's an earthquake of the magnitude of 8.3 or 7.2 or 4.6 or something like that. It is not a linear scale like something else. Linear scales, most things in your brain are, or most things you know about are linear scales, are your mark, you know, your mark scale. If you have somebody who has 40% and somebody who has 80%, that's a linear scale, right? 80% is twice as much as 40%. Um, let's, let's think about if we were comparing the amount of money that people had in this room and we were giving a number to it. Let's say you were, Let's say you're comparing, do this here. So you're comparing numbers. When you're comparing numbers that are in the same kind of number of digits, the same magnitude, if somebody has $23 and somebody else has $56 and somebody has $92, that's easy enough to compare using a linear scale. You can just say, here's zero, here's 100, and let's put all those on here. Let's put 23 down here, and 56 would actually be right here. And... 92 would be over here somewhere, right? You can see all of those numbers on a linear scale. If you're comparing numbers that have greatly different magnitudes, you can't really compare them on a linear scale anymore. What I mean by different magnitudes is if we start having someone who has $1,200, where would that have to be on this scale? Like if, if my scale only goes $0 to $100, I got to change my scale, obviously. So let's move these off for a second. Um, how would I have to set up my scale if I need to show this number now? I can't go up to a hundred now. What do I have to go up to? At least twelve hundred, right? So even if I said, even if I went up to two thousand here, well, I can put this number on there, right? Uh, about there somewhere, maybe. Where would this go? Yeah, like pretty much way down here. Like you know, it's about a hundred, so maybe it's if I'm lucky, it's uh, right there. And where would this one go? Kind of like right in there <laughs> somewhere. And this one would be. Would you even see this one? It's maybe here or something. What if I add in a number now? Like I want to put in a hundred. Well, not to use the same digits. $150,000. This scale doesn't work, right? So let's uh, let's move all this stuff off of here again. And what do I have to... How am I going to show all these numbers here? If I, what do I have to go up to to show these? Well, at least, yeah, 150, 200,000 here. This one's easy to put on that scale, but if you think about how the other ones, that one might be about there. What about this one? Where is this one going to show? Pretty much, like, is it going to be here? Is it going to be here? Where is it going to be? Somewhere there. It's almost it's almost going to be like that. You're not even going to see it. Like, all four of these are so small compared to this that they're not even going to register on that scale because this is 100,000. This is 50,000 still, right? There's 50,000. So if I divided this up into 50 spaces, this is just over one of those spaces. So it's 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 barely going to show up on there. It would be about here somewhere. And then these would really not even register. If you're comparing numbers that have greatly different magnitudes, it's hard to use a linear scale. If you're comparing amounts of money that you have and your friend have in your pocket right now, maybe somebody has $23 and somebody has 56 and so on, if you're comparing that to how much money Bill Gates has or somebody has lots of money, I don't know how much they carry in their pocket, but if you're comparing it to numbers like this, you can't use a linear scale because you can't see all the numbers down there. This is the case with earthquakes. Earthquakes, the magnitude of earthquakes, I know that we use numbers like this to represent them, but what they actually represent is um, these are the logarithms of the actual amounts of energy involved in those earthquakes. The way you could um, compare numbers like this is you could look at the logarithms of each of those numbers because the logarithm of this would be one point something, 
the log of this would be 1 point something, and this would be almost 2, 1.9 or something like that. This would be, what, 3 point something? This would be 5 point something? Those numbers you could put on a scale and compare them easily, but it's important to remember that if we were doing that, 5 going up to a 6, what would that mean? Let's make the numbers nice and easy here. A thousand is three. A hundred thousand is five. If I if I was using this to represent um, how much money we had here, as a five represents a hundred thousand, what would six represent? A million, right? If you're using a logarithmic scale, you're looking at the logarithms of the actual numbers because they're easier to compare because the actual numbers are such greatly different magnitudes. You just have to remember that a jump of one on the scale is actually ten times as much. And that's what's true in this situation here. If you go from eight to nine, that actually is ten times more energy. These are the exponents of what you're looking at, of the amount of energy released. A magnitude nine earthquake, that's how much energy, ten to the ninth. A magnitude eight earthquake is ten to the eighth. We have, mag we have magnitude 2 and 3, like little tiny earthquakes, happening all the time around, and you don't even feel them because they're so small, right? The 10 to the 2 is so insignificant compared to 10 to the 9th. 10 to the 9th is what? A billion? 10 to the 2 is 100. You don't even see 100 if you, if you make a scale that goes up to there. Try it on your, you know, on your calculator. This is a this is a tough concept to understand here. Let's just say we're gonna um, we'll keep it simple here. Let's go. Well, this doesn't matter actually. We'll go zero to ten that way because we don't care about that. This way vertically. Let's go. Um, let's go zero up to a hundred thousand like we did before. The scale here is what can we use as a scale? Let's use nothing so we can see where the lines are here. I hope I don't have anything under y equals. Get rid of that. Okay, if I was to draw, I'm going to draw some horizontal lines and you see where they are. Remember, this is zero. This is 100,000. If I put in y equals 50,000, that's easy. It's halfway, right? If I put in one that's y equals 10,000, that's right there, right? It's already pretty close to the bottom. If you put in y equals... 1,000. 1,000 compared to 100,000, it's right along the bottom. You certainly, if I if I put on here now 1,200, it's going to be hard to tell the difference between 1,000 and 1,200 because they're over top of each other on this screen. Even if you had a higher resolution screen, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't make that much of a difference here. And then certainly, if you put in something like 100. Even if I do get rid of these other ones that are making the bottom hard to see there. Okay, there's 50,000, there's 10,000. The the 100 doesn't even register here because it's so close to the bottom you can't even tell, right? If you do the logarithms of those numbers, then you can create a scale that's easy to see the difference, right? If you, if you went up to a, a billion, you certainly couldn't see 100. But if you looked at all the numbers, it's easy to see the actual the logarithms on a scale.